Well, we're keeping our eye on the tropics as the East Coast braces for Tropical Storm Debbie. Both governors of Florida and Georgia have issued a state of emergency this weekend in anticipation of high wind speeds and the potential for that storm to intensify into a hurricane before it makes landfall. Preparations are already underway and we can see it there in both of those states. And Mario Ruiz is with us here at the desk because uh, we know that those storms can pack a tremendous punch, whether right. they're a hurricane or a tropical storm. Mm -hmm. So any advance notice they get is good. Yeah, my brother is actually living in Tampa right now, so mm -hmm. I had a phone call with him uh, ahead of this, just making sure that he is aware of the situation because uh, a lot of rain in a small period of time mm -hmm. in those locations can flood really easily. Yeah. yeah. And I do want to give you an update on Debbie because right now uh, there is quite a big, big swath of rain kind of pushing into Florida's west coast. And that's really the initial band. So it's just getting started. The winds haven't picked up just yet along the coastline, but water's certainly choppy. There is a look at the center of circulation right now at the center. Max sustained winds of 60 miles per hour, wind gusts of 65. The center is 150 miles southwest of Tampa, but still you can see the impacts it has in terms of the rain. This is what it'll do. It's going to move towards the north and then take a shift towards Florida's Big Bend. Over the next 24 hours, we'll see it strengthen. It could even reach category one status. So we're talking a hurricane making landfall in Florida early in the week, sometime Monday morning. Eventually, it does continue taking a shift towards the East Coast and dumping a lot of rain in coastal Georgia, maybe even southern uh, South Carolina. So that's what we'll be watching. But tropical storm warnings, hurricane warnings are already in place because storm surge is also going to be an issue along Florida's West Coast. And as far as how much rain, we could see 8 to 12 inches. Some spots could pick up over a foot of rain, and that kind of depends on how much moisture is still left in the system as it approaches uh, coastal Georgia and South Carolina. But a lot of locations anywhere from Tampa to Cedar Key could see uh, close to the 8 to 10 inch range when we're talking about water. Uh, really rain, not water that's getting pushed. That's an additional uh, adding that you have to do there. but. For us, we're not expecting any local impacts. 82 degrees right now. It feels like 86 when you factor in the humidity. Today is going to be very similar to yesterday in terms of our temperatures. We make it to about 95 degrees around 1, which is exactly what happened yesterday. 99 degrees between 3, 4, and 5 in the afternoon. The heat index will be very close to the actual temperature. I'm thinking close to about 100, so about a degree or two warmer than the actual temperature. And the reason why it's, there's not a big difference is because of the wind. Today, the wind is out of the east at 5 to 15 miles per hour. That generally does keep our humidity well, pretty normal for this time of the year. Now that'll change in the days to come. For today, a lot of locations staying in the upper 90s across the Metroplex, Denton and Collin County as well. A few spots along our western counties could make it to 100. And uh, the next several days, a lot more could make it to 100. It's because of this ridge of high pressure moves right back over North Texas. You know, over the weekend, it did briefly shift towards the west, and that is what allowed a cold front to move in yesterday. We'll eventually see that ridge of high pressure strengthen, and as that happens, our temperatures are going up. We're talking a high of 102 on Tuesday, 104 on Wednesday. Wednesdays when we get close to that record of 106 that was set in 1988. And because the southerly wind is going to be back, our heat index will be over 105 at some point. So that's what I'm saying. This week could be one of the hottest weeks we've experienced this year so far. The hottest temperature has been 102, but we could see 104 by the time Wednesday rolls around, Mark.